Today I've prepared a little textured punchinello piece which has a few different techniques in it. We'll be starting with some normal patches of punch needle and when you get comfortable with the technique we'll be adding some finger loops and some tufting and also some gorgeous texture with cotton string. I've actually made this into a punch needle kit so if you're interested you can find the link in the description below. So now let's get started and have some fun. So let's have a look at what's in the kit. First of all, we have all kinds of gorgeous wool yarns. This is a wool silk blend wool yarns, also with some silk. And this is the color palette Ocean. And this is the color palette Wonder. And with that, you also get this uh, cotton string, which will make the lovely texture over here. And then, of course, we need a hoop and the monk's cloth, the pattern and the punch needle. So you will get the small punch needle, which comes with three different size needles and some string and an embroidery needle to make the textured part over here. And you will need some extra supplies, which I will list right here. Now let's start off with preparing the pattern. What I'm going to do is cut it out completely. Just around the circle. You don't have to be too neat. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have to prepare the hoop. So we'll put the pattern aside. So we have to unscrew the hoop first, just a little bit. And we're going to place the cloth over it. Now make sure that the lines, so there are lines in the fabric going vertically and horizontally, that these are going to go on straight. So not like this. And then you place this one exactly at the top in the middle. All right, and let's just close it up a little bit and then turn it around and start pulling on all sides. So it is stretched out evenly like that and this is an important step now we have to close this with a screwdriver so not just manually and i like to use these pliers as they have this nice flat top and it works the same so let's just do that so if you don't do this step with the pliers or the screwdriver you might risk the cloth coming out when you punch and that's really quite annoying and this way it really stays put and it works really well so now just a final tuck on all sides and tight as a drum and you're ready to go so in this case we want the design to be on the back of the hoop because that's the side we're going to punch in and all the loops are going to be on the front so this is the side you'll see and you'll hang and this is the side that you will punch in so what we're going to do is stick the pattern to the top and now i realize i didn't i'm going to put something extra here so you know which side is actually the top so this is the front of the pattern we're going to flip it around and then make sure we align it with the top and what you can do now is simply attach it with a piece of tape cello tape it doesn't matter don't worry about getting the exact right one anything that sticks is fine and you're going to turn it around and on this side we're going to 
draw out the pattern. So as you can see, when you hold it up to the light uh, or to the window, it's going to appear instantly. And then we can simply copy it. So we're going to just follow these lines like that. I have a simple pencil here. You can also use a pen. As long as it doesn't smudge, it's all fine. And these lines can go all the way to the edge. There you go. So now you can remove it. And you've copied your pattern. So let's now prepare the punch needle. So this is the handle and the handle has a little wheel on the side which you can close and open. In the handle we're going to put one of these needles. So there are three different size needles in this kit. We have three millimeters, two millimeters and one millimeter. We're going to start punching with the white silk blend and for that we need the largest of the three, so the three millimeter needle. We won't be needing the one millimeter, so the smallest one. This is for embroidery floss, so if you're interested in trying that out, this is the needle for you. And we're going to put it inside the handle. So there is a hole here and we can put it inside and then hold it and close the wheel. And now it's in and ready to go. In this piece, we're going to make different height loops. This will make this gorgeous texture. And as we're starting with this one, this is about the lowest uh, setting we're going to use. This is set at three centimeters. So that's what we're going to have to measure. So we're going to measure from here all the way to the tip of the needle. And that's what's going to be three centimeters. By ad adjusting this needle, we can make different height loops. So let's set it to three centimeters. And let me see what we have right now. Almost perfect. Needs just about extra millimeter. Okay, so this is three centimeters and we're happy with that. So let's now make sure that the yarn goes through the punch needle. And for that, we're going to use this threader I have. This one will also be in the kit. Make sure to fold it in half and then squeeze at the top to make sure this is pointy and now we're going to thread the needle by going in through the back there is a little hole right here so we're going through there and then on the other side we're going to make sure it goes inside the hollow needle and then we can just push it all the way through until it comes out the other end and then put in the yarn through the needle right here and pull it all the way back through. So you can set the threader aside and just pull a little at the bottom to make sure you have just a tiny little tail here sticking out. So let me just give you a quick little punch needle crash course. We hold the punch needle like a pen and then push our needle down into the fabric like that. Make sure your yarn has slack at all times. So this is very, very, very important when you lean on it or there is a knot in here or something obstructing the yarn from flowing through the hollow needle, it's not going to work. So that's rule number one. Make sure the yarn always has slack. Rule number two, always push it all the way down until it's touching the fabric. Then pull your needle up and graze the fabric and push it back down. Pull your needle up, graze the fabric and push it back down. So make sure you don't pull up your needle too far. 
like this because this is not what we want. We want flat stitches like this and not these funky ones. So this is not secure. You want them to lay exactly flat. So we're going to take this out, push the needle in all the way until it touches the fabric. Pull it up, just simply graze the fabric, move it along a little bit and then push it back down. Graze the fabric and push it back down. Okay, so there is one more rule uh, and that is that you have to rotate your needle when you change direction. So when I come up, I want the open part of the needle to face the direction I'm going in. So I've been going this way and now I want to go that way. So I'm moving my needle like this and then do exactly the same thing. So now I want to go that way. So I rotate my needle, make sure the right side is going the right way and then I can go on. And that is basically it. So during the punching of the design, I will explain a little more. So this is basically it when it comes to punch needle. But if you are still having trouble, I have a video called Common Mistakes, which is really helpful to figure out what is going wrong. So I really advise you to take a look at that when things are not going the way that you would hope. So don't hesitate to check that out. You can find the link somewhere up here. All right, so let's start with the first area. What we're going to do is outline the area first and then just simply circle our way around until we are in the middle and we filled up the entire area. So we're just going to start somewhere randomly. We're going to push it in. Remember, this should have slag, and then we're just going to follow the line. So we're going to make quite small stitches. Let me just show you up close. Just a tiny bit like that. As we are also making quite small loops on the other side. So this is what it should look like. They are all quite even. And when I make my stitches the same size, they are also divided evenly. So that's what you would want. So just keep going. And remember to turn your needle in the direction you're going in. Okay, so now we're going to go along the edge so you cannot go all the way into the edge. You have to leave a little bit of space because you want to be able to push your handle all the way down. Otherwise your stitches won't be long enough. So make sure you leave a little bit of room so that you can push down your handle all the way. And just keep checking on the other side if you're happy with how it's going. So this is just the basic stitch, nothing special about it. You can make different lengths and that's it. But in this kit, I will also have some other types of stitches, which I will show you in a minute. First, let's make sure that this stitch is going really well. Okay, so now we finished the first circle and we're going to continue. And we're just going alongside the other stitches. You want to make the two rows sit nicely next to each other, but you don't want to go inside the other stitch all the way. That will make it way too dense and we don't want that. So we're just going to go alongside the other stitch and just punch right there. And sometimes it's even okay to leave a little bit of space between these rows 
because you want your stitches, your loops to have a little bit of wiggle room and you don't want to have them all clinked together too much. So I'm actually now quite happy with the density of the stitches and I'm leaving a little bit of space in between the rows. So not in the beginning, but especially as I'm reaching the middle, just a little bit. And that would make the loops have a little bit of wiggle room. And that's the way I like to see it. So you don't want to see the monk's cloth in between the loops, of course. You don't want it to be like tightly, tightly packed like this. Okay, so now I'm reaching the middle. I still have a tiny bit left. I'm just going to fill that up right here. And that's it. So now I can look at the other side. Pretty happy with that. So over here I accidentally punched inside another uh, loop. That can happen. So. Don't worry about it. You can cut it off afterwards and you won't see it anymore. The same thing probably happened here as well. That's really not a problem. So what I'm going to do now is pull out my needle, then hold the stitch, so push it down, and then I can pull it out all the way and just cut the tail off with so you will be left with little tails, but this is the back of your piece, so that's fine. And just to finish this, I'm just going to snip this off like that. And here as well. As you can see, you don't see any of it. So that's area number one. Let's move on to the next one. And as you can see, there is still plenty of yarn left, so you don't have to worry, you will run out and you can make another lovely project with this. So I just wanted to take a moment to tell you that I started a new channel, a second channel, and it's called Studio Fersi Into The Woods. As my family and I have made a big change, we moved from the city into the woods and are renovating our new house completely. And this channel is all about our renovation. So I'm in my new studio right now, which didn't look like this when we first bought the house. So if this sounds fun to watch, then be sure to check out my channel. It's up here somewhere. And I hope you enjoy the content. And uh, let me know in the comments and subscribe uh, to my new channel. I would be very happy with that. Thank you. So next up is this area, which is the wine color in this kit. And for this one, we're going to use the blue one in the ocean kit. And this is a chunky yarn, just like the white one. So we can still use the same needle, but we are going to adjust the height a little bit. So we want this to be four centimeters instead of three. Open it up a little bit. Pull it up. Excellent. So that's four centimeters. Here we go. Take our threader and just do the same thing again. This is actually the same type of stitch. So that's pretty easy. And we're going to stitch it right over here on the left side. And when we rotate it, it will be on the right side. So, and we're going to do exactly the same here. So you can practice a little more. So these stitches are going to be a little bit taller. So you're going to see a height difference with the other ones. And in that case, you might also want to increase the size here of your stitch. This is something you can experiment with, how long you would like it to be. I'm just going to make it just a tiny bit longer 
and I'm also going to make sure that I don't stitch the rows too close together. It's really a subtle difference, but when it's taller, it's filling up just a little bit more space on the other side. So you can make less stitches to fill up an area so you can increase the size of your stitch. That's basically how it works. Push the tail aside here a little bit. Simply follow the line. So I finished this bit. So as you can see, I left quite a bit of space in between the rows and on the other side, I'm really happy with the density. So as you can see, these stitches are a little bit higher to give it a lovely texture. Doesn't it look gorgeous? So let's take it out. to the next area so we're going to do the middle bit now and that part we're going to do with finger loops so just a slight adjustment to how we make the stitches so that we can make them even longer okay the middle part is the lovely almond color in the wonder colorway but we're going to use this beautiful green color uh, for the ocean kit and this is the twisted wool yarn and this is slightly thinner so we're going to use a different needle so we're going to use the two millimeter one just open it up take that one out and put this one in and we're going to set it to three and a half centimeters to make it a little bit easier to show you i put my hoop in a frame you don't need to do that it's just so that I have my hands free to show you. So what we're going to do is start exactly the same. We're going to do the middle area, push it in, but while pulling it up on the back side, I'm just going to hold the yarn, not pull on it, just hold the yarn and then pull the needle back up and do the same thing. Now take the needle, I'm going to show you on the other side and just hold it like that. So I'm going to turn this around and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the other side. So I've pushed my needle all the way through and now I'm going to take the yarn here, just this bit, and I'm going to hold it. I'm not pulling on it, pushing it down, just holding it so that it stays here when I pull my needle down like that. See, and now we've made a longer loop. And then on the other side, I'm doing the same thing again. So that's basically it. Let me show you again. So here's the yarn next to the needle. Just going to grab it, hold it, and then pull the needle down, make the next stitch and just let it go. Hold it, leave it, and make the next stitch. So that's actually quite easy. And by holding it and not pulling on it, you're going to make all the stitches the exact same size. And we're just going to continue filling up the area this way, all the way. And then we have really high stitches. So this is what I call finger loops. So hold it. On to the next one. Hold it. On to the next one. 
So you don't have to look at the other side. Just grab hold of it. And you can do it pretty fast too. And don't worry if not all the stitches are exactly the same size. It's a piece of art. You're not a machine, you're making it by hand. And that's really the charm of it. So this part is now finished. Um, I just wanted to show you I'm really leaving a lot of space between the rows as these loops are really long and taking up a lot of space. So be sure to do that as well. And what I also wanted to show you is that loops can get tangled with each other. So you can untangle them. Just take your punch needle and just look how they are tangled so you can Hold this one and then pull out the green one. So there's one stuck here. It's going through these two loops. I'm just going to hold these and at the root here, I'm going to pull this one out like that. So you can just do this for the whole piece to make sure it looks extra clean. And these finger loops have a tendency to be a little bit trickier than the normal ones. So for the next two areas, this one and this one, we're also going to make finger loops. But now we're going to set our punch needle at a height of 4.3 centimeters. So if you have the kit, you will note, notice that I have put every measurement in centimeters and inches on the pattern, uh, which I haven't done yet, but you are looking at the future, me. <laughs> and then I will, so you can easily follow along. Just put the pattern like this and you will see which area needs which size and also which diameter needle you would need. I'm just going to do the finger loops for both these areas and, and then we're going to do some tufting which you can see right here so I'll be back when I have finished those okay so I've now finished both areas and this is what they look like so leaving quite a bit of space between the rows just consistently going round and round and since we used a longer setting on the needle we we have also created longer loops, which are really going everywhere, as you can see. What you will also notice, because these loops are super long, you will tend to also punch loops inside each other, inside this area, and they will get tangled up a little bit. And that's normal because you're punching and these loops are already there so you'll just punch inside one but that's not a problem because we're going to tough them and then we'll, they will get untangled by themselves so let's start the tufting progress um, for that you will need a snipper or embroidery scissors or just a normal scissors would be fine too so what you can do now grab a loop or some loops like that and just snip it at the top so that's really not difficult it just takes a little bit of time so time to be a little mindful about what you're doing and enjoying the process that's what it's all about and slowly we'll start to see this lovely texture emerge and I really love doing this and we can also trim it a little bit at the end if we think we want to make it a little more neat and I will also do the same for this side and I will be back 
later. Right, all done. Uh, sometimes you will see, which I'm noticing right now, that there are still some loops sneaking, hiding in between them. So you can just search through it and just make sure you got all of them. And now I'm thinking this is a little bit longer than I wanted it. So I'm going to take out my larger scissors and just snip it off a little bit. Just to give it a little trim like that. And I think this is kind of cute. I want it to have a little bit of a rougher look. And then on this side, so this is going to give off a little bit of dust, fiber dust, but that's okay. And on this side, so this is still pretty uneven and fun looking, but on this side, I'm going to trim it a little bit more. And I also, have this really cute scissors for that from Cutting Edge. I have a link if you're interested. You don't need this a needle for this project, but I'm just saying if you are interested and I want to work with it, then you can find the link below. So this one helps you to evenly cut the whole thing like that. I'm just giving it a little bit of a trim as well, but just a little bit more than the other section. So you can already really see the difference between this side and that side. So you could say you don't need to cut the loops first. You can just start cutting it like this. That's fine too, if you like but I prefer to do it this way. I feel like I have a little bit more control. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks really cute. And now I'm going to punch the last section here. This is just normal punching. And then we're going to do this last part, which is the lovely texture with the cut and string. But first, let me clean this up a little bit. So now it's up to this last green yarn and we're going to punch this section, just normal punch. We're going to switch the needle. So we're going with the largest one. And for this one, we're going to set it to four centimeters. So let me just do that quickly. And this is just the same as this one. And this one, just normal punching going round. So I'll just quickly do that. Now. Okay, we're now on to the last little bit of our piece. So we're going to use this. This is cotton string. And it's quite a chunky one. There are also smaller ones. And we're going to lay some texture on here and then use this string and the embroidery needle to attach it to our piece. So what I like to do is very simply take the string and then at the end make a simple knot comes through like that and then you have some lovely texture here. And then we're going to attach that to our piece. So make sure you go in all the way. And then we're taking our string and we're going to thread the needle. Okay. And perhaps cut off just a little bit like that. And now from the back, I'm going to go in, in my just in the fabric here and come up just beside the knot over here. And then I'm just going to basically sew this knot to the fabric and making sure I don't really see this string. So I'm going to hide it in the knot a little bit 
like that. And then this thread disappears. So on the back I left a little tail so I can knot these two together. Like that. So now I will probably attach it a little bit better, but I will first make the next knot. So like that. This one won't have the end part. Okay, and then I'm just going to attach it here. It's coming up in between the knots like that so that's this is really very simple just making sure the whole thing is attached to the fabric So now I'm going to make another knot, but this time I'm going to cut it off as well. Okay, like that, and just cut it off, leaving a little bit of a tail, like that. So I can add the texture. So I can now make with the leftover string, I can now make another one. And just attach it here. Just see how you can place it, giving it an interesting look. Just think about where the tail is going and so on. But don't worry too much about it. It will look pretty cool pretty fast. You don't always have to strengthen the nut too much. You can also leave it open a little bit like this and then just make sure it's attached. So now to finish it, we're just going to simply glue this to the back of the hoop. And first we're going to cut off all the excess fabric. So we're just leaving a tiny little bit, like the width of a finger. So this is going to be a piece for hanging on the wall or displaying in some sort of um, standard frame i don't know how you call it and so this is not for use so not for a pillow for example and in that case we can leave everything as is 
But if you were to do this for a pillow, especially for the tufted part, you don't need to do it for the normal punch needle bit. But for the tufted part, you would probably have to put something on the back like a glue or a latex, but we're just going to hang it on the wall and it's not going to be used or anything. So then you can easily leave it like this. So now for my glue, I noticed that I cannot, for the life of me, open this thing. So I'm, I'm going to cut it open at the end and hope I don't spill too much. Okay, here we go. So everything is coming out. So what we want to do is just put the glue around the edge on the hoop. Simply push over the fabric onto the glue and just go around until it all sticks. And then you have finished your piece. I hope you really enjoyed it and perhaps want to continue with punch needle. That would be really great. You can see there are many possibilities. You can also check out my other videos where I have different kind of projects you can do. And there you go. Fluff it up a little bit.